So in this demo, I'm going to be showing you how to spin up a Compute Engine instance, run some software on it, copy files from that uh, Compute Engine instance to cloud storage, and publish those files to make them public. Uh, the use case that, that we're going to be doing is to plot earthquake activity that happened in the previous week. And this data comes from USGS. So let me go ahead and go to cloud.google.com. So I'm starting on cloud.google.com, and I'll go to the compute engine part of it, go to VM instances, and create a VM. So I'll click Create here, and at this point I'm creating a new virtual machine. Let's call it an Earthquake VM. Right? We can call it whatever we want. We can choose where in the world we want it. I happen to be closer to Oregon now, so I'll go ahead and do US West, and I'll pick a zone. I can pick US West B. Let me go ahead and say that I want to use two virtual CPUs. I can, as you can see, we can at this point in time go up to about 64 CPUs with about 250 gigs of RAM. Another thing that I can do is I can click Customize and say that I want you know, 18 CPUs and 50 gigs of RAM. Go find me a machine that matches these requirements. But in our case, what we'll do is we'll just go back and we'll pick a pretty small machine, like one which BPU is probably enough, and then 10 gigs of space is enough, but of course we can change that and we can use a different operating system with diff the different size of disk if we wanted. And we want to be able to use GSUtil, GCloud, et cetera. So I will allow full access to all my cloud APIs so that I can write to cloud storage from the VM. And I don't want to directly access the VM through HTTP or HTTPS. So you now we will just access it through SSH. So I'll go ahead and create the virtual machine. And at this point, the virtual machine is getting created. Let's wait a few seconds, and once the VM is up, we should be able to SSH into it. So there it is. Here's my VM. And at this point, this is a bare bones virtual machine that I'm SSHing into. This virtual machine here, yes. So it doesn't have anything on it. In fact, it doesn't have even very basic software like Git. So if I were to type Git here, it says Git is not found. So I need to install Git. Good thing is, we can do that, right? I have root access. And so what I can do is I can do sudo, which gives me root access, apt get install git. Okay, and it says, do you want to continue? Yes, I do. And this now installs git, which is a way to access my source code repository, which contains everything else that I need. So I will go ahead and do git clone https www.github.com Google Cloud Platform So this now gets the data from GitHub, gets all of the data that I need, including the files, and now if I do ls, I have my repository, and in this case, this is part of the files for this course. And so we can go into BDML fundamentals. And there is the Earthquake VM. I'll go into the Earthquake VM and look at what files are present. Turns out that I have an HTML file already. I have some uh, have shell script to ingest data. I can do less ingest .sh. And this basically goes ahead and removes an existing earthquakes.csv and does a wget, which is a way to download data over HTTP from earthquake.usgs.gov and saves it as earthquakes.csv. So that's what ingest.sh does. But in order, then I also have transform.py. And transform.py basically is some Python code that uses matplotlib to go ahead and parse the earthquake data from USGS and put it on an earth map, creates a PNG out of it. So this particular file can be run 
to go ahead and process a weekly data from, uh, from the USGS. It goes ahead and gets one week of data from USGS and creates earthquakes.png. In order to do that though, I need to have some software installed and the software that I need, it's all listed in the install missing.sh. So I need to basically get a bunch of different Python libraries. So let me go ahead and first run install missing.sh. This goes ahead and downloads and installs all of the Python packages that I need. As you can see, working with a virtual machine on the cloud is like working with any other Unix machine. In this case, because I created a Debian machine, I get a Unix machine and that's the Unix machine that I'm working with. At this point, it has all the Python packages that I want. We can go ahead and say ingest.sh and it will go ahead and download an earthquakes.csv. We can see that there's an earthquakes.csv now that's been created. And if we were to do head, head shows the first few lines of the file. It turns out that currently there has been an earthquake in California and there has been uh, other earth another earthquake in Alaska and so on, right? So let's go ahead and so there's 93 kilometers east northeast of Cape Yakataga, Alaska at the time that I'm recording this demo. So there's a bunch of earthquakes. We've gotten the data. Let's, but looking at a CSV file is not very interesting. Let's go ahead and create an image out of it. In order to do that, I will run transform.py. So transform.py is essentially getting the earthquake data, converting an image. And notice at this point, there's no image, but now if I do lsstar.png, I now have an earthquakes.png. So let's go ahead and now put it onto the cloud. We want to get rid of this virtual machine. The whole idea is compute and storage are separate. So we've done the compute, we have some files, let's copy them off the machine into cloud storage so that we can delete the machine, right? So let's go and create a cloud storage bucket. The way to do that is again, go down here and last time we did compute engine, this time we're gonna do storage. So we'll go to storage browser and say that we wanna create a bucket, okay? So let's go ahead, I already created this bucket. Let me just delete that, I don't need that bucket. Let's say that I wanna create a bucket and I have to give my bucket a unique name. So let's say that I wanna give my name, give the bucket the name earthquake, but the bucket name is already in use. A bucket name has to be globally unique. So I can say earthquake 2019 and I have it, right? So there is nobody else who's created a bucket of this name. If you can't come up with a unique name, try using a project name, right? This project name is also globally unique and in many cases, that might work as well. An easy way to do that is we could go down to the home menu and there is a project name. I can copy the project name, go back to the storage thing and say, can I create a bucket of that name? Yep, I can. So that also works. So I can create something with this particular name as my, re as my bucket. Let's make it multi-regional so we can access it from anywhere in the world. And it's gonna cost us about three cents per gigabyte per month. And uh, let's, we can now choose how to set the permissions. Normally you want to set permissions but one object by object by object, right? But let's go ahead and specify uh, it object by object. So we can go ahead and create the bucket. So now we have created a bucket with this name and I'll copy that into my thing. And that bucket is now created we can now come back to this virtual machine and we can say gsutil ls and the name of the bucket. And it doesn't have anything in it right now. So it should be empty. So it doesn't have anything in it. What we can now do is it can give gsutil copy earthquakes.star to the bucket. So at this point, it's copied three files. It, it's copied the CSV file, the HTM file, and the PNG file. And indeed, when we come down here and we say refresh, 
we should have the three files. So hooray. So we have the three files. All three files currently are not public. So no one can access them except us because we own these files. But at this, from this point onwards, I don't need the virtual machine. So let me just go down to the compute engine and say, hey, that virtual VM instances, select my virtual machine, and I can do one of two things. I can stop the virtual machine, in which case it's like pausing the VM. I'll be paying for the disk, but I won't be paying for the storage at all, right? Uh, the other thing that I can do, instead of stopping the VM, is that I can delete the VM, right? So I can go ahead and delete the VM. I don't need it ever again. So stopping is actually a very convenient way. We've installed a bunch of software. We don't want to get rid of the VM, but we don't want to pay for the compute of the VM. So what we could do is we could just stop it, right? So the VM is no longer running, and we can just say stop, and now the VM is paused. And at this point, right, once that VM is paused, uh, we'll only get charged for that 10 gigs of disk that we had attached to the VM. So a relatively inexpensive way to have a virtual machine sitting around that has you know, all of the software, everything that we have installed on it. If we ever need to run things again, we can come back, restart the VM, and run things. But let's go back and go back to our storage. And you will see that the data here is private. And what we want to do is that we want to make it public. We want to make it accessible from by anybody. What we could do is we could go down to the storage. And now we are in the bucket. And we can say that we want to take these three files, go to the permissions, and we can say that we want to go to the permissions and we want to add members. And we can add a members call all users. Okay. And give those, give those users, everybody, storage object viewer. So they will be able to view that particular object. Okay. So now we have our all users. And all users has a storage object viewer on these objects. So now if you go now, we see that these three things are public. And Google Cloud helpfully warns us that these three things are public. They all have public links associated with them. So we can actually go down here and say, what is a public link? Click on the link. And that is storageapis.googleapis.com. So anybody who comes to this particular link will be able to basically see the earthquakes this week. So this is, at this point, I'm recording it on March 28th uh, to, I'm recording it on April 4th. So the week started on March 28th. So I have seven days of data, and these are the earthquakes that we saw in Alaska, and those are the earthquakes that we saw in California, and you can kind of see the ring of fire with all of these earthquakes that are happening around the coast of the Pacific. But to bottom line, what did we do? We spun up a virtual machine, we carried out processing on it, and then we took those files, we copied them to cloud storage, we were able to stop the VM, VM is no longer running, but the files are still available, and we're able to serve them out.